we have um, next speaker, Henrik. You want to sit there? Or? Yeah. So I will display the. So um, the paper is called uh, Calibration Games, Making Calibration Tasks Enjoyable by Adding Cultivating Game Elements. And it's, uh, it's about calibration and how it's uh, important for a lot of uh, a lot of kinds of interactions with computers uh, to get accurate results and to improve user experience. Uh, but it's often skipped because the, the calibration uh, in itself is very, uh, very tedious. And, and the solution that they have come up with in this paper is to uh, to make uh, calibration more enjoyable by by creating calibration games. And um, they have uh, they have designed a framework for creating these games uh, from uh, a standard calibration procedure, and that's done by matching uh, each uh, four calibration tasks to a common uh, to a common game element. Um, and they've also developed. Uh, Free calibration games according to this framework as uh, as examples, and have uh, and have looked at uh, basically two questions for each of those games: uh, whether uh, the game is more enjoyable than the standard calibration, and whether there's difference in the data that's collected. Uh, so um, the design framework uh, is a four-part framework, uh, and it's like I said, done by identifying the core task for uh, each of the, the nine uh, main types of calibration, and then uh, finding the associated game mechanic that, that can be used. Uh, so, so part one is uh, identifying calibration types. And uh, there's two, two main types of calibration, uh, one for addressing human abilities and uh, limitations, and then one for measuring technology alone. Uh, so, for humans and abilities and, uh, and limitations, that's things like uh, perceptual thresholds, like what's the minimum light that you can see, what's the quietest tone you can hear, and stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, just notable differences, which are, for instance, uh, how much different must two colors be for you to tell them apart. And uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of them, like yeah, memory performance, uh, motor performance, and all these things. And uh, then for measuring technology alone, that seems like, uh, for instance, uh, uh, color space recognition, which is adjusting color output from a device so that it matches uh, like the representation of the, the ground truth. Kind of. uh, so that's, that's the first part, that's identifying these, these, uh, these calibration types. And then part two is uh, finding the core task for for each calibration. Uh, so when you're moving from from the calibration and you want to make a game uh, to represent that, the the main objective is that the the calibration must be must be maintained, as uh, so the game must calibrate the same thing that the standard procedure does. And, and so gamification then kind of requires that you identify the task, like the core task of that calibration. Uh, so that you can ensure that that's also the the basis of, of the game version. Um, so examples of that, those are things like, uh, well, yeah, there's a list there, but uh, yeah, signal detection, reaction time, pattern matching, and those kind of things. And uh, then part three is uh, finding the game mechanics to, to uh, match uh, those uh, core tasks. And many game mechanics are already designed around uh, those failing blocks. Uh, if you scroll down just to the top of the next page, yeah, that's the 
the mapping that they did. Uh, so for instance, as you can see there, for instance, like perceptual threshold is mapped to signal detection uh, as the core task. And then that in kind of game mechanic terms is like the presence of enemies or targets, for instance. Um, and then uh, part four is uh, adding game design elements in addition to those uh, to make it just more like a game and make it more entertaining. So the ones that they picked out were uh, were challenge, theme, reward, and uh, and progress. Uh, and that's yeah. Uh, and they like, like they made uh, three games as uh, examples uh, using this framework. Uh, so the first one is for calibrating color, just notable differences, um, and that's for calibrating how little change in color is necessary for uh, for a person to notice. And the standard method, uh, that's the picture at uh, the bottom right there, um, is uh, just you have a, yeah, a picture of a lot of uh, colored circles with half of them being a different color. And you have the person then say if they can, if they can tell the circles apart. Um, but it's, it's really tedious and boring for the user because this takes about half an hour. And, you have to, and that's if you can do one measurement a second. So, um, so it's, that's why you know this calibration uh, procedure and others like it are often skipped because it is really, really unenjoyable for for the person who has to do it. And to build a, a game to match this, they built a kind of like a Space Invader game. Uh, it's a 2D shooter, and uh, the enemies are are uh, colored squares that move down the screen that you're supposed to shoot. And there should be a picture a little bit longer down there. Yeah. And yeah, and they are different different colors, uh, and like they're m as you get further in the game, they're more and more like the background. Uh, so and then they look at which squares you shoot and which squares you don't, and calibrate that way. You know, assuming that those you don't shoot are those you can't see because you can't tell the difference in color. Um, and yeah, the, they also added so. Uh, kind of the uh, the danger with that is that people are going to hit uh, squares that they can't actually see uh, by accident and screw up the calibration. So uh, they added there's a very the game is very focused on accuracy so that people just want to shoot uh, randomly. And also they added that well you can kind of see it there, uh, yeah the grid so there's a grid there's the lines where that you move between so that's going to be easier for people to pick the target that they're actually aiming at. Uh, and uh, the second game is for uh, control to display ratio, which is uh, basically the relationship between uh, control device movement and on-screen cursor movement. So for instance, how much you move your, your mouse and how much the pointer moves in, in correspondence. And uh, the standard calibration is usually just uh, you have targets on a plain background and you click on them. Uh, so and to gamify that, that's basically this is the game that's this game is opposed to the first one is just kind of like exactly the same as the calibration, just dressed up with uh, a score and, and some you know tracking of how well you're doing. Uh, and they, it's kind of like a like a two dimensional like shooting gallery game where you know targets appear, you just click on them to shoot them. And uh, again, it's very. The game is uh, focused on you being very accurate because that's what they want to measure. They don't want people to just shoot randomly. Uh, and uh, yeah, they have different levels to kind of explain why the uh, the curse is because you do you do repeated uh, like trials and the cursor move moves at different speed and it calibrates what speed is the best for you based on how accurate you're being. And uh, then they have different levels to kind of explain why the cursor is moving uh, slower and faster. Like uh, they have like, I think it's called the this, this sludge level or something. Where you know, yeah, the theme is that your, uh, your cursor is moving slowly because of you know this, this change in the environment in the game. Um, <coughs> and the third one is for calibrating a, a physiological sensor. Uh, so they do they do point out that this game this is kind of a calibration that doesn't have to be gamified because it it's very fast just a standard calibration method it's only 
just uh, so this is for calibrating, you know, uh, uh, for chest sensors, uh, which uh, you before you can use them, you have to calibrate what the maximum uh, chest the circumference is, um, and uh, you they say that this isn't this is really quick and you just see them breathe in and out a couple of times, so it's not really necessary to gamify. But this was done more uh, to see what kind of effects it would have on uh, on uh, players' performance, like if you added rewards and, and challenge and progress, how that would affect the, the measurements. Uh, so it's basically how you breathe out, and it's called baby launch, uh, which I think is a little weird. But you, you basically breathe out and, and you throw this baby. Uh, but he's happy with it. So. Yeah, yeah. They say that he's laughing and you're throwing it into a ball pit. But Still, it seems like you maybe could throw, uh, you know, something more appropriate like anything else. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like this part. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's um, it's um, basically that's the only thing you do. You sit there and you breathe out, and the further you breathe out, the further you throw the baby, and uh, and you get scored uh, based on that. Uh, so, like I said, for each of these uh, games, they had. Uh, 12 people play both the game and do the standard calibration. And then they they uh, were given the questionnaire afterwards. So you can see that's for uh, the first uh, game. Uh, basically what was, what was similar for all the games was that uh, people found the game to be significantly more enjoyable uh, and they didn't indicate like any difference in terms of difficulty or, or frustration. Uh, and they also felt like they had to, or they were trying harder. And they felt like the game, when they were playing the game, they were more rushed and they had to like like work harder. Uh, which could be a problem for some measurements. Like you want to, when you do calibration, you want to measure for the mental state that the user is going to be in when they use the actual product or wherever you're calibrating for. So maybe you don't want the user to actually try try that hard, but that depends on on like circumstances. So yeah, for the first game, uh, again like um, the the main ones were uh, the two top ones. Like this is on a one to five scale, by the way. And um, yeah, for the top two ones, enjoy completing the task and completing the task was fun. It's significantly higher. So CG is is the game and SC is the standard spelling calibration. And also uh, that they had to work hard to complete the task, and they felt rushed when doing it. Those are the ones that are significantly higher. And for the second game, also was higher in, in fun and enjoyment, uh, but not uh, really any significant difference in effort and difficulty. And, and it's probably because, uh, like I said, the for the second game, which is the um, the uh, uh, control to display uh, cow version. It's the game is pretty much exactly the same as the the calibration is. It's just you know dressed up with scores and stuff. And, and for the last one, uh, the respiratory sensor, uh, also like higher enjoyment and and fun. But unlike the other two, it's there's no significant difference in the in the like fun score. Uh, and that, that's probably because uh, because uh, the input technique, like you're just you're still just sitting there and you're breathing, and that's all you're doing. Probably a little too. Uh, yeah, people just probably don't consider that fun, even if you dress it up with, even if you give them a score on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> the second thing that they wanted to see was if the uh, if the calibrations are still valid if they're still accurate. And um, for the first two games, they did see uh, an improvement in, in the performance in the game version, uh, probably because people are more interested in, in games, and so they're trying harder. Uh, and in like in the third one, that's not the case. Again, probably because it's still you're just sitting there and you're, and you're breathing. Um, the, the data was significantly different. But they argue that it might still be usable and that it might actually be more accurate. And the reason they can't know for sure, they say that more more studies needed to figure it out. But uh, they can't know for sure because there's no real like baseline or like 
the right answer or ground truth for human calibration. It's just like everything is just an approximation. So, yeah. uh, <coughs> so uh, the study had, like, they said five main findings, which are like uh, that calibrated procedures are good candidates for gamification uh, because they do have, uh, they do share four tasks and can be mapped pretty easily. Uh, and calibration games can be successfully built either by using uh, the same presentation as the original uh, procedure, which is what they did in the second game, or, or a different one, which is more like the first game, where you change what the user is actually doing. And calibration games were clearly seen as more enjoyable, uh, which is not that surprising. People like playing games. Yes. And uh, some game versions did produce significantly different data, and gamification can also change other qualities of user experience, like Making making it more demanding, uh, and so from this they conclude that the game version does solve the problem of uh, of uh, calibration being you know people not being motivated to do calibration uh, because for all the games they did indicate that it was more fun and more engaging, um, <coughs> and yeah, it, uh, like I said, it's not surprising because people generally like games better than just a standard calibration, but uh, that also important to remember that it wasn't really that much of a game. It was just like adding some scores, adding some, adding some fancy graphics and some sounds, and people still, just with that little effort, people still find it a lot more, a lot more enjoyable. Um, and you know, for the game data, uh, the main risk, of course, is is that uh, the data that they collect will be will be inaccurate, and that the first, the top priority has to be to make sure that doesn't happen because, yeah, that's that's the purpose of doing a, a calibration game. Uh, but yeah, uh, they just say that uh, you know more studies needed to determine exactly why these results are are different, and uh, yeah, it's also worth mentioning that the difference, though although it's significant, it's it's very small in like real life measurements. Uh, so. um, <coughs> they say talk about uh, that the like uh, when you shouldn't calibrate games. So this basically meant to, to change uh, like tedious and boring tasks into something that people will actually do. So if the existing calibration is not tedious, then there there isn't a lot of incentive to to convert it to a game. And it's also important to note that you know adding challenge and adding rewards could add noise to the data, and it's important not to make it to to change it too dramatically to or to incentivize people to like cheat or uh, or change the strategy too much uh, so that you will mess up the, the calibration. Yeah. And, and uh, they also add that uh, the added cost was very low for them. I think they said they use three days uh, to create the games. Uh, but that is, again, they didn't, uh, this is in a real life setting. So they just looked at the data afterwards. But if you were doing this in real life, you have to make sure that the game that you're making actually produces data that is still valid. Uh, so it, in real life, it probably would take a more time than what they used to create, to create games like this. And uh, yeah, they basically just yeah conclude that uh, that uh, they think this will make people more likely to do calibration, and that you know further work is basically uh, uh, making more games and, and deploying them in real life and checking why the data that they collected was different from the one that the actual uh, calibrations uh, collected. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Questions? So one thing here is that the <coughs> domain was very narrowly specified and very narrowly picked. So that sort of allows a more thorough evaluation and 
quite a targeted uh, yeah, research study on it. So that I found that quite interesting, especially we, when we set our own projects, we tend to go broad and yeah, being narrow usually helps. Um, the second thing I was I was thinking about was um, they they've evaluated they, they've come up with with games and they've evaluated them uh, and in one case that was sort of a different way a different <coughs> mechanism to measure the same effect with, with the first game. Whereas with the other two, they almost didn't change the, the mechanic of the calibration. And I was wondering how much of an impact that can possibly have on the calibration itself if it's gamified and the, it's changed. So they discuss it, but that's sort of a, a big big area of, of how that influences the actual measurements. So yeah, you can cheat and you can have certain mechanic which promotes certain behavior and so on. And so how, how can you prevent it? How can you make it into a game without affecting the way the calibration is actually done? That's, that's very difficult. Um, well, it would be uh, probably, you probably want to tell people this playing the game that this is actually calibration. That's that right. There's, there's yeah. going on in the background so that they know not to try to that's right. break to, the to, game. To, to gain the game, yeah. Um, but how, how, you, how you do that? So how you design it in such a way that it sort of extracts that particular data that you're after uh, without making it tedious as the normal calibration is <coughs> and without making it a game which can be sort of uh, a little bit open, too open for the, for the play, for the interpretation. So I found that, that kind of interesting subtopic of that topic. Uh, and what they, they focus wasn't exactly on this, but I found that element sort of interesting of how you do that, how you constrain the game in such a way that you get what you want to get out of it, at the same time leaving the the game aspect of it to, to for the player to have the the agency, to have the freedom of, of choice and and so on. And I yeah I don't know um, how how that can be yeah achieved. I don't know if it's the computer on the same lines, but I was surprised when I came to the final page. They were saying that all three games, game implementations, required approximately three additional days. I guess that means that each required three days, they required three days per game, or in total? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. That wasn't clear. But I think it is per game. It's three days per game. Now, what's not clear to me is whether uh, it seems that they designed all the calibration software after deciding they would make a, 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 a game of it. Because they don't say that there's an existing calibration software that they gamify. They are gamifying the calibration process and design a, a calibration software and then they gamify what they design. Now, what's not clear is how much they actually had that game designed in the mind that they designed the calibration software. Uh, because to me, three days is you can't develop anything in three days. So, so I, I don't believe that uh, to gamify a calibration piece of software would take you three days. I don't believe that's the case. That, so they might have been some cost already because the way they designed the calibration software was that they had in mind that they were all going to add gamification in the end. So adding the gamification, it was easy. They didn't have to, to do any significant change. Mm. So, but I don't say it, it very clearly what is the the calibration software was and, and the design and complexity of that. That's, uh, so that's uh, that's kind of clear to me. True. I, I, I thought they were working with the existing methods of calibrating, but yeah, as you say, you, you would need to have the software to start with. Um, they didn't say so. Yeah. I think to me a couple of interesting 
uh, again, some some uh, on the side in uh, the paper discusses, but something that I, I think is worth thinking of and looking into in more depth, especially if you're uh, this is a paper that we will be using in the um, in the project. And that is, if you look at the bottom of four ten. Uh, it says this example does raise a related issue as mentioned in those control, um, um, that should become a problem for game based calibration. Very bottom of 410. Uh, do you have a no, no page number? No, no page number. So, okay. Where is it? Uh, it's the third to the last. The one with the discussion block. It's further down. Yeah, yeah, much further. The discussion. The first. More. Yes. Very good discussion. If you look at the, the bottom to the right front, it says we, this example does resonate the issue. However, yeah. that could become a problem. If yeah. games motivate people to try harder, it's possible that their better performance depends on higher level efforts. <coughs> now, the question is. If they work harder because they would otherwise skip part of calibration work, it's fine. Now, if they work harder because the game requires them to work harder just to fulfill the game objective and not because calibration work is, is hard, then they're going into some additional costs here. And, and that is uh, absolutely worth to, to explore. Mm -hmm. Is that extra hardness or extra work because they do a better, more accurate job? Because that's what we want to do. We want to have a better, more accurate calibration. So if that extra work was to have better quality and more accurate, then it's that, fine. That's fine. But if it's just because the gaming elements require you to spend more resources, then that's probably not a good idea. For no gain. For no gain. Yeah. So well, the game, well, the economy is gaining that. Yeah, well, at least they say that normally people just skip calibration. So obviously, if you do this kind of calibration, even if it is well, but at least then it becomes an optimization issue. Is that can we now reduce the costs and still achieve the results? So that's the question. So can you possibly have some gaming that is less costly for the player and you still have the same results? So there's an optimization problem. You want to, to reduce the cost and get the same outcome. So, so mm. that's definitely worth to consider and, and, and look into. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom of the next page, the first column, uh, determining spatial memory ability. So there is some concern about, uh, as with all games, games work for some players, some users, not others. And uh, the looking into what are the additional requirements for what type of user this work and, and what do we do with those users that we like to calibrate but they don't fall in a category? That's mm. also something to, to keep in mind when, uh, uh, <coughs> when working on it. Now, if you look at the uh, the right button on the right column, there I think they have a couple of, uh, of interesting bullet points. Uh, the, the, the second bullet point there is that if an existing standard calibration procedure is not tedious. Then there is a little need to convert the procedure into the game. So that's worth thinking about. We shouldn't gamify everything. It, it has to have a purpose. That it's uh, it takes too long time. It's too tedious, and, and uh, that the users aren't able to keep up motivation. Then it's maybe a uh, reasonable occasion for introducing a game. Mm. Um, and the other one is again on the on the cost side. The one below. Games require the user switch mental context, even minimally. You think about the golden dice of the game versus the, uh, the uh, calibration. In some test situations, this condition could disrupt the user's work focus. So that's again something to work. These are kind of the uh, end user costs of gamifying anything. And keeping that in mind, I think is a good, uh, kind of good. Uh, bullet points and comments here, please keep in mind if we want to go, and this goes for any series game, uh, because we, the game is, is not the real purpose, purpose is the series activity and the game, so we have to be aware of what could be possible. Uh, 
possibly be his own weaknesses and some challenges. So I think this this one sums up a few of them that you can just keep in mind. Mm. Yeah, there's also this uh, this this problem of if you do gamify the calibration and then you take it away, will the users even bother <laughs> exactly. That's always, doing yeah. the old stuff? Yeah. That's always, that's Right, so let's have a look at the questions. So we did, we don't have a lot of questions this week. So I would like the people who didn't submit questions to post post questions for the two articles. So we Do you have, know anything about those who didn't show up today? Are they? Uh, no. They're just not here. So we have two questions only. There is a bug. Which uh, makes the numbering from zero kind of <laughs> that, the famous, <laughs> the famous zero zero one based indexes. Yep, but I left it. It's like okay, I don't I don't mind. Um, so what ethical issues does self-centered play pose, and what are some of the ethical issues related to non-violent ga games? Um, so Boa, yeah. Similar, uh, they they kind of uh, go to the nature of the ethical ethical issues raised in the in the paper. Um, so if you guys can post other questions for this paper, um, I will sort of allow you to vote on the um, uh, on the questions. So currently the system works this way that you have two points per paper, and before you distribute your points, you have to know how many paper how many questions were, you, you have two points per question. So you need to know how many questions were posted. So if you have five questions, then you have 10 points, and you can distribute the 10 points among the five questions minus your, yeah, if, 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 discounting your question. Um, so if I lock it, then it will be only two. And then given that the only authors you know, ask those questions, there will be no point uh, validating the, uh, the, the those questions. So we need at least five, I would say. Uh, all right. So then the second article. Um, but I think going to the questions, I think we addressed these yeah. questions in the description. That's right. Yeah, yeah we discussed the. Yeah. Yeah. Second article: When should calibration tasks not be gamified? We discussed that briefly now as well. Um, when playing a calibration game rather than doing normal calibration tasks, player may try harder than they normally would. Why might this be a problem? Uh, we discussed that, <laughs> that that one exactly as well. Um, so we sort of covered that. So let, if we have more so questions. I, I, I would say that these were all good questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly what we were thinking of. Right on spot. Yeah. So yeah. So please, please post your your questions there, and then we test whether the voting and counting of the votes works. Um, um, we sort of yeah. We have 15 minutes. I can talk a little bit about the paper I read. Um, I read the paper whether the so gamification works. Front or top. Sorry. Maybe you should put it on front or. Yes, I should have put it on front or yeah. So I will I will do that, that. yeah. So then because it's uh, since we presented here, it's a relevant one for the uh, or the it's, camp, so, so. It and it is relevant to the area which we discussed today, especially for the first one, uh, because it kind of touches on the same uh, same topic. Uh, so what these people um, do, they uh, try to select some uh, articles which empirically evaluated gamification systems. And they try to do some meta-analysis on top of those articles. Um, so the conclusion is, yep, is here, and it basically summarizes the the findings. So they say generally, most article report positive um, outcomes, but there is a number of issues with the studies. 
Uh, and you have to take the player or the user characteristics into account, and you have to take the context into account as well. And those two confounding variables are usually outside of the control of the experimenters. Therefore, you have a number of problems with the study. Um, so I just highlight a couple of things. So the first thing, they make a small claim about the, the growth of the interest in gamification in the recent years. Uh, and they back that claim by doing some, um, some number counts on the publications. So this is the number of hits on the left, and the rest is the number of articles they could find on the right, with the exception of 2013, which is estimated because they didn't have the full year. So they sort of estimated of how it may look like. Um, so I sort of did a, a not very non-scientific uh, uh, query on gamification on Google Trends. And indeed, it seems more and more people ask about that term starting yeah, 2010 when that term was coined. So nobody used that term before that because it, was, it, was, it didn't exist. And since then, sort of it, it is gaining in popularity, especially in February. It sort of hit the, the 100. So Google rescales it to from 0 to 100. So February, last February, was the, the peak, so to speak. And from March, we don't have the data, so that's why we have a drop. Um, but it's sort of, I was thinking, if the term didn't exist, it doesn't mean the study didn't exist. So people were doing the same thing. They just used different terms and different things. And I, I couldn't find anything. So they didn't do any analysis of that, unfortunately. Um, and I did put a couple of terms in. So the, the dark one is games. And as you can see, it peaked in August 2008. And in August 2008, we had Olympic Games in Beijing. And with Chinese population being really skewing the statistics, I thought probably games is not a good term to ask, because that will probably be overloaded with the non-game non games. Um, because people asking for Olympics, they ask games. They don't ask game. Right, so if we take that one out, we have uh, game, almost a flat, flat line. There is a small increase, but not significant. Uh, and gamification doesn't register. So all those other terms are so low that they don't register. So you actually have to take game out to have some some trends on the other terms. Um, so. The computer games. That's serious game. Yeah, we can add. Games. Yeah, so still doesn't just... register. So computer games take over. And it seems the trend is actually the opposite. Uh, it seems to be dropping if we take that one out. Then, yeah, you have the gamification showing up, and you have the other. Uh, serious games also being sort of uh, almost flatlining. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it doesn't prove anything. It just says it's kind of difficult to judge what's kind of currently happening based on popularity contests. Uh, you can sort of, yeah, you can't really tell. Um, they do have extra things you, which you can do, like, like down here. For example, you have certain queries people do, and so gamification examples, it's the most queried query, right, <laughs> uh, in terms of gamification. And you can check whether anything is growing or not. So in this particular scenario, nothing is actually growing. Um, if you do manipulate the, the search queries a little bit, so if I take gamification out, and we check some of those things, yeah, those nothing is raising. Um, but I did, nothing is raising here. I did, um, if you put games, check that. Yeah, 
So that was the interesting statistic. So a lot of people ask query games for girls uh, on Google. It's kind of a very, very popular, and it kind of rose, whatever the period was, uh, massively. Uh, so there are certain things which uh, show tendency of growth on Google. Uh, Right, so back to here, I don't think that claim that claim can be backed up. I mean, there is a little bit more publications being using that term since it was invented, but I don't think the, the field as such grew, grew uh, beyond what it typically had. It might be, so one of, one of my hypotheses is that it might be a kind of a narrowly defined gamification in terms of the points, leaderboards, and badges, which is sort of a new, relatively new phenomenon which people kind of publish about. And they talk a, a little bit about it later. So I will go back to this. So the, the next thing that I found interesting was they um, assembled yeah, roughly 700 publications, which they queried from all those different sources. And they say that the true number is probably much lower because they have duplicates and there are certain short papers and so on. So out of the 700 papers, they have identified, um, so then they excluded some uh, some papers who follow, fall into some of the four uh, categories. So there was no empirical studies. Uh, the results were not explicated. They didn't have the focus on the identifiable uh, affordances. Or it wasn't, um, um, it was study on gamification rather than full games. So they excluded all those things, and they identified 24 papers, which were the, the best they could find, right? So out of those 24 papers, later on, so altogether 24 empirical studies were selected. And out of those 24 studies, they had a, a huge number of problems of why those studies were sort of not doing the right thing. And one of the interesting things which I found here was uh, this one. So they say, out of those 24, none but one was doing the right thing in terms of the evaluation of psychological um, um, aspects. And that paper is day paper as well. So that, that was quite interesting, too. Um, so most papers, as I was saying, kind of focus on points, leaderboards, and, and badges. So that was the three top most um, yeah, motivational affordances people used to gamify some, some circumstances. And there were some less uh, common uh, which follow. But those three were, were in the lead. So that also kind of uh, highlights how narrowly defined some of the gamification systems are if you're only using the uh, those three elements, uh, which almost never are that e important in games. So when you're playing games, you do have them. But if you didn't have them, the game would still be the, almost the same, right? And with the gamification systems, if you take that out, you have nothing left, almost always. Uh, so that sort of Mm, yeah, p puts a little bit of a um, question mark of how how well those things are, are conducted. So they they focused on um, they they sort of um, divided the the studied outcome into two, like psychological outcomes or be behavioral outcomes, uh, and they summed up the, the, the results. So none of the studies show that there, is, there was no effect. Right? So if something was published, it never fell into that category. So some tests were all positive. Some 
were saying um, some parts of the tests were having positive outcomes, and some uh, articles were only having some descriptive statistics. They actually didn't have uh, um, the numerical sort of uh, calculations. Uh, so they say, yeah, th those cannot be completely trusted because you, yeah, you, you sort of are making com uh, certain conclusions in context. And so you only have those two papers and those which sort of um, highlight some of the positive outcomes uh, of the gamifications. So they then go into discussing of what was wrong, but they do that in a kind of a discourse manner. So they don't calculate any statistics, they just point out kind of paper by paper of what might have been sort of the, the wrong thing or why certain things were um, having some confounding variables. Uh, and they identified uh, two, most, two most common ones. So the context was the, the big one. And then the second one was uh, the characteristics of the uh, of the player itself. So when uh, yeah, so they here they kind of uh, identify a number of of limitations of the studies, but they they sort of uh, do that in a uh, yes yeah, in in a summary. Um, so the final final conclusion was yeah somewhere towards the end of that yeah so some some of the some of the results from one study were completely the opposite to other studies. So when participants were asked, sometimes they were pointing out to things which were cited as a positive thing in one study as a kind of a negative in another. So they say it sort of depends on who, who is doing the, the evaluations and who is actually participating. Um, they haven't studied the effects of taking the uh, gamif gamifications out. But they pointed out to studies which showed some negative outcomes after that happened. And they were categorized into two categories. So one was because people felt bad about losing whatever badges or leaderboards they already accumulated. So having that lost was kind of a negative in, in itself. And the other one was the lack of um, ex extrinsic motivation to do tasks which required would require that. Um, so I, I found the article thorough, and and the methodology was um, was quite well organized. They grouped. They they haven't developed it. They've used another article to organize the um, uh, the categories um, into the into the matrix. So they've used somebody else's um, research to do the, the matrix, and they fit the articles that they kind of uh, evaluated into into the matrix uh, themselves. And it's in in one way the the, re, the the article is inconclusive. So it doesn't say either way whether the gamification works or it doesn't. Uh, but from the more discussion point of view, it does highlight all the, the, those different confounding variables and the difficulties in actually making the, the studies kind of uh, scientifically sound. They highlighted also the difficulty in setting up the control groups often. Uh, so it, I, I think it's kind of a relevant and, and worthwhile article to read. One of the um, results they also got was in um, yeah, I may not find it, but they, they, they said that the most gamified systems are the learning systems. So most, uh, most studies that they've evaluated uh, were using gamification for learning outcomes, and then you measure the effect by measuring the learning outcomes. So that was one of the most uh, um, 
common targets for, for gamification systems. One which wasn't, and they were slightly surprised by it, was the commerce and marketing, because it seems gamification is quite a popular topic in marketing and kind of persuasive technologies for customer behavior, but they haven't found any articles actually directly discussing it. So the mass media publications and the actual scientific work seems to be completely at odds because nothing is happening in actually measuring whether customers buy into those systems or not. Uh, and they kind of identify it as a, as a potential avenue for, for research. So yeah, so that's sort of a very quick, mm -hmm. slightly unorganized <laughs> walk through that, that article. I will add it to the fronter and I yeah, I encourage you to um, to read it. And in context of Hannah's paper, I found the re the the uh, that those two conclusions pretty much uh, aligned with with the um, ethical aspects too. All right. Um, so I think that's it. Maybe we should go and have a quick um, run through how you guys doing with the projects. <coughs>